Now, we all know I'm a bit of a German fanboy, but when it comes to specific car manufacturers, there's one in particular which I do have more respect for than others, which is why today I have this car with me. One of my previous videos, I did the review on the 182. It was pretty much exactly what I expected it to be. And I think with this one, I'm hoping it's gonna be a more improved version of that. Let's just get straight into it. This is the Clio 197. Before coming out here today, I had a quick look online at the prices of these things and I was actually surprised with how cheap they can be. You can pick one of these up for probably just over £2,000. I want to know if there's a reason for it being that cheap compared for the same age to its German competitor, the Mark V GTI. Yeah, fair enough, you can get one of them for the same price, but the condition of that would be miles lower than for the same price of this one. So starting off at the front, it has the two litre naturally aspirated engine producing 197 brake horsepower, which I think is amazing for a naturally aspirated car. They're Brembo's, aren't they? See, how does, how does a car this cheap have that stuff? So Brembo brakes, I'm not too sure of the specifications of them. I'm hoping they're a bit better than the last car. Five seven, man. Here. Oh, fuck it. No, we're not gonna make it. <laughs> Um, the only things he's done to it is it's got air filter, induction kit installed, and it's lowered on coilovers. But apart from that, the car is standard. The alloys, they don't look cheap. I think they suit the car really nicely. They remind me of the Mark IV R32 alloys. They've got more definition and more tone to them. When I first looked around this car, there is something which immediately got to me, and it, it just made me wonder why Renault didn't fix this or do something about it. Does it look to you guys like it's missing something? I quite like it. What, you like this, the stealth look? The diffuser, yeah. It's a blown diffuser. But where's the, where's the fat tips? It's a blown diffuser. What does that mean? You blow the diffuser to create a lower pressure of air so the car sits down into it. Say that in English. You blow exhaust gases through a diffuser, which that's kind of doing. It creates a lower pressure of air, so when the car going over the top of the car, the air going over the top of the car, the low pressure of air, the car sits down inside it. All right, if they did that on purpose, then fair enough. I give them even more respect for that. Come on, we're talking about the looks here. It, it could be improved. I had to make sure these are actually real. Oh wait, I'm gonna need the stick. Yeah, they're real. Real vents on, on the arches. I'm surprised by that, that's good. Enough talk, I think I just wanna get in this car and drive it now. Let's go. Much improved interior. I mean, look, it's got screens and everything. It's got a screen, I suppose. It's got a screen up there as well. Oh yeah. It's got two. Right, we are in the clear. I'm actually really excited about this. Just taking them for a quick drive, just to show me what they're And it sounds amazing. It sounds so roary. Oh, it's got the same sort of steering as the other Clio though. Very light. Oh, yes, 
yes, they work. They've improved the brakes massively. Oh, that, that dead zone is scary. I think that might be the traction though, not the car's fault. they've done that. that thing, is it called BVT? It feels like it revs forever. I felt like I was redlining it and it was only up 4,000 RPM. Going around that corner in reverse, I can see a lot. We're having a quick breather. This car, it's like the same as the 182, but a bit more. It's like it's just a bigger version of that. It feels heavy, you can tell the car's heavier. It's got 197 brake horsepower, but the power wise difference is, is limited by the weight of the car. I don't know, I don't know what this car weighs, but I assume it's a lot more than a 182. Oh, traction control is still on. Let me redo that. How'd you turn traction off? How'd you turn? I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, we're gonna have to just do this with traction control on. hoping that Clio or Renault would do with this car is improve the interior, which they have. Yeah. The interior is a lot better than their older ones. A bit more of a different design with these types of buttons. You know, you're getting this car again, you're getting this car for the power, the, the funness of the Renault Sport. You don't get it for luxury like Golf. Golf is a bit more boring, but it's not dull. 2,000 pounds you can pick one of these up for. And I think for the, the price, 200 brake horsepower, good enough interior. They could have spent another tenner and got a decent glove box. Good. 
get up to the, like, the speed you want to be going, but when you're there, it feels like it's, it's gonna just keep climbing. First gear is a bit slow, but the rest of the gears fly. My thoughts on this car, it's so similar to the 182. The way it drives, this is a bit smoother than the 182, but the way it definitely handles and drives is almost identical. It's the same sort of fluffiness as you go past. Even though this is on coilovers, it's bouncy, but it's not, it's not stiff. It's still nice and smooth. So the whole point of this video is to find out if this car is good value for the money it's worth. Like I said, I jumped on Auto Trader just before coming down and I found tons of these for just around the 2000 mark. And I was a bit scared when driving this that it would show that it's less than its other competitors, but it doesn't. The only thing which is that has less than the others is the interior. But at the same time, you don't buy these cars for the luxury of the interior. You buy them for the, the cheap and affordable performance that it gives. And it definitely lives up to its name for that. Yeah. Would you buy one over a Mark V? You know the answer to that. Everyone knows the answer to that. <laughs> All right, I'll say that. Would I prefer this over the Mark V GTI? No, I would definitely. <laughs> Me being biased, obviously, I love the Volkswagen and Audi group. Um, I would say it's worth buying the extra, well, spending an, an extra couple hundred for a better condition GTI Mark V. But if your budget is around two to 3,000 and you're looking for a good condition car, which is fun, and is good value for money. I'd say go for this. My thoughts are almost the same as they were before I drove the car. It's almost exactly as I had imagined, but I'm surprised that the steering is still very light. Okay, they improved the brakes a ton. They are good brakes, they're better than yours. Buy this car for the brakes. Anyway, thank you for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you wanna see more of this car, go follow him on Instagram right here. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you're new around here, subscribe. I'm still looking for a Megane R26. So if you're around the London, Surrey sort of area and you have one, message me on Instagram or on Twitter. Those are probably the two best places to message me or my Facebook page or that. Anyway, yeah, give me a message if you have one of those and you're down for me having a little spin in it. Let me know. Yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.